I'm joined here by Dublin's Jack McCaffrey. We're just having a little bit of bilingual discussion here. We go between Gaelga Agus Berla, Cochard's across to Siglifican the Shadist. But it's been a very long road for you. I mean, cruciate injuries, you don't want to put a time frame on it. You never know when you come back. And even when you do come back, you're a little bit ginger, I'm sure, when you're walking on it first and then trying to run. And it must have been a very long process physically and mentally. Yeah, definitely. Um, it, it was. It was It was a long couple of months. And as you said, I really just tried to avoid that whole pitfall of, um, of, of putting a time and date on it because I think you just set yourself up t- to miss that. And, um, and, you know, that would obviously be very disappointing. But really happy with how it's all panned out to be honest um, and it, it's great to, to be able to get back from it and I think it'll, it'll stand to me hopefully. It's not uncommon for athletes when they do come back from an injury like that that I suppose a little bit careful or a little bit nervous did you find when you first came back training and maybe your first game that there was a little bit of oh should I go in for that one or were you because it's very very rare for somebody to be able to compartmentalise it and just say that's done my, my cruciate is exactly the way it was you know you yeah. carry a little bit of fear with it. Um, yeah, fear probably wouldn't be the right word, but uh, I agree with you. Um, I think what happens is you go out to play and someone just hits your shoulder or you get a bang in the leg or something like that, and the injury's just gone, then you're, you're kind of fully in it. So, um, you know, it, it's, it's not something I worry about at all now. But it's definitely, you know, it, it's, it's quite a um, psychological thing, getting the confidence back, I'd imagine, um, in that initial kind of return to play type time period but um, yeah, thankfully that's a good bit behind me The Dublin team when we watch you you're fluid it's nearly like a musical song every note works every key works most of the time you know you see it there's a, there's a rhythm to it sometimes I do feel that you guys don't get the kudos you deserve for what you've achieved I don't want to say it's begrudgery but you know the first few years it was like aren't Dublin great look what they've done now people want to knock you down and there's not much people can knock you with so we start knocking the fact that Maybe you guys don't seem to enjoy it as much, much as other teams. Does that ever bother you? Um, no, it, it doesn't, to be honest. Um, I think it's natural enough that when a team is um, is doing well that they'll they'll kind of have people uh, coming after them. Um, but in terms of enjoyment, well, I think we're all really enjoying ourselves. Um, you know, We can't exactly walk around with a, a big sign that says that, but <laughs> if you want to take my word for it, we're, we're having a good time. So, um, yeah... <laughs> If, if people don't see that or sometimes maybe they don't want to see that, that that's completely up to them I suppose where that might come from I'll just use the last game you played as an example against Galway it wasn't a great game anyway for the neutral or any spectator to watch the first half was quite enjoyable but the second half when I was watching it there were times when I could see Dublin players getting into position and if they wanted to they could have boosted on the gas and gone and done something but it just felt a little bit that you're very systematic in your play which is great it's a great achievement but I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but yeah. I just noticed it. Okay. Uh, I think it's probably a bit easier to sit here and say that guy should just run the pitch ahead than, than actually doing it. Um, it was it was quite a tough physical game on the weekend, and I tell you, uh, th- there were some sore bodies after it, so um, there's, there's probably a bit of that. Like, the game is played at such a high pace and such an intensity that, you know, you kind of have to conserve energy when the chance um, comes available. And the other thing is that scoring chances can you know in a lot of games are few and far between so you want to make sure that the right person is taking a shot as opposed to someone like me just kicking the ball from 50 yards which rarely ends well and um, so yeah look it, but there are some lads on our team who in that situation would shoot because they can um, and you know I'd probably take a man on a bit quicker than some other lads and you know everyone has their strengths and you just kind of I suppose we're experienced enough now to know that we have to play to our strengths um, and yeah, that, I don't really know. I can't defend things too much. Like I think we're we're going about our business uh, the right way. You are as well personally. Uh, I think one of the things people admire about you is that you're very much you're Jack McCaffrey the person. You're not Jack McCaffrey the footballer. You've gone to college. You started your career. You were happy enough to step away to further your own career, and you came back from an injury as well. And you you just do it your way, and people like that about you. Because that's always a bit of a pitfall, isn't it? Some people can fall into "I am the footballer," and other things can slide. Um, yeah, I'm sure you can. Like, it, it, it's such a massive part of your life that it, it can be very easy to to uh, kind of let it consume everything. But it's it's something that we have worked on as a team over the years, and I think kind of maybe just naturally evolved into um, that we we're all quite um, aware of that whole work life balance and just you know where your priorities are and making sure that everyone you know if, if you're if, if things 
off the pitch aren't going well, it, it'll invariably kind of translate into your into your performances. So it's very important to make sure that everything is everything is dandy. And obviously, that's not going to be the case um, all the time. Th- things are going to happen. Like, but you just kind of <laughs> say get on with it, which I've said about five times in this interview. But um, yeah, just. It was a brave thing to do, though, to walk away from that panel because of all the teams, it's very, very hard to get a starting 15 in Dublin. And, you know, it, is, it was brave. You, you probably didn't feel brave at the time. No, no I, don't, I don't think brave is the, the word. But, um, yeah, it was just, it was kind of the headspace I was in at the time. I wasn't particularly um, loving football. And, you know, as I alluded to already, once, once that starts, you're not playing very well. And there was just a lot going on. Um, so, yeah, I just made the decision to go do something a bit different for uh, for a summer, like, and it, it thankfully worked out very well. And was it perhaps that you weren't enjoying the football because you had that itch that you wanted to do that thing, or did going away for the summer come because you weren't enjoying the football? I, I, I think it came because I wasn't enjoying the football, to be honest. Um, you know, it, it wasn't that I had a burning desire to to go away for a summer and, and that football had to take a back seat as a result it was just that football was taking a back seat and so I had a summer to play with um, and yeah so that's kind of how that worked out Finally um, <coughs> All-Ireland final to get to one is an achievement to win one is absolutely amazing I know you're going to say four in a row doesn't mean anything to you but the fact it's just, they're all worth, worthy of their own merits but it must be great <coughs> to go home every once in a while and look and see those medals on the mantelpiece wherever you keep them and just think I did that um, yeah, I, I probably I haven't kind of gotten to that stage in my life that I, I'm looking back and taking stock of things, but it, it's certainly something I look forward to doing one day. Um, Where do you keep your medals, actually? Um, Mam has them stored ser- somewhere securely. She wouldn't trust me with that knowledge, so uh, I'll, I'll have to go home and ask her right there. This will sound crass when I put it, but you know the sentiment I mean when I say this. Do Dublin footballers appreciate the beauty of ho- having that Celtic cross? Do you understand that they're not that easy to come by, I suppose, because a bit like the Kilkenny Hurlers, year after year, you're there. Yeah, I, I can guarantee you that we do. Um, you know, we all grew up supporting Dublin in a time when they were very, very few and far between. There's a lot of us who've had family members involved with Dublin in the past. My father, for example, who, who never won all Ireland, and it's um, it's something that we're well, something I'm always kind of conscious of that these are really, really special days. Um, and it's, it's definitely not something we take for granted at all.